Oh, what's up guys? Welcome to part three of my three-part series on how to make a mountain bike video. If you haven't seen part one on the gear you need to make a mountain bike video or part two on some tips and tricks when you're out there filming your video, please do go check them out. I'll leave some links down below for you in the description to those videos. Part three is going to be all about editing your videos, so I'm not gonna lie. This is going to be one of the longest videos I've ever made. But if you're willing to sit down and watch through the whole thing, I'm gonna give some really detailed tips and tricks and actually show you inside my editing platform how I take my video from a ton of raw footage to a fine-tuned three to five minute edit. Now since the video is going to be longer than usual, I'm gonna throw up some of the ideas that I'm going to be teaching you guys and the times that those are locked and loaded. If you're already a pro and you're just looking for one thing or another, just skip to these times to check out the different features that I'm going to show you in the editing platform. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you smash that subscribe button so that you get all of the updates. From review videos to shred it, I do everything I can related to mountain biking to help you guys learn through my experiences. Now without further ado, Let's jump right into it. Time. The first thing that you need to figure out is which software you're going to use to edit your films. The platform that you see here is Final Cut Pro. There are multiple other softwares out there like Adobe Premiere, Filmora, there are free options out there. Just do your research and figure out what's going to work best for you. That being said, all of the tips and tricks that I give you here should work across most platforms. All right, so let's jump right into it. First things first, you wanna make sure that all of the film that you have has been organized. As you can see here, I've started an event and a project. I'm going to import the film that I have on my computer. As you can see here, I'm very organized. Once you're done with a ride, you're gonna have all of this footage to scroll through. So the first thing that I always do is I sit in this folder outside of the software. I go through, I like to watch all my clips, make sure everything looks cool, check them out, delete anything that's excess or any film that wasn't needed or accidental filming. Just try to make sure that everything that you have in your folder before you import it is pertinent to the film that you're making. I've already done that, so I'm going to take all of my clips and import them into the software. Now you can see that all of the clips that I had have been imported, so I have my project up top here, and then I have all of the clips listed down below. Once I have all the clips in here, you can see that there's a scroll over feature. So some of these, you know, I'm only going to use a super small portion of this clip, but the whole thing's in here and we'll pull out what we need as we go. As you can see here, I have also imported my end logo and my intro video. So this intro video was previously made in Final Cut Pro. And then my end logo is very simple. This is something I just made in Photoshop. Photoshop is one of the extra tools that I use to make my end logos, to make some of the features, also to make some of the thumbnails for my videos. Assuming that you've seen my YouTube channel, you'll see that I have some pretty bright and shiny thumbnails. Again, if someone's searching for your video, this is the first thing they're gonna see. Now, normally when I start my videos, the first thing I'm going to do is start with a base. You need to start somewhere in order to build your video out. And for this particular video, my base is going to be my first person footage. So I'm gonna take all my first person clips and I'm gonna drag those down into my timeline, which is where you actually make the video itself. Now that we have all the first person in the timeline here in the base of our video, we're gonna move into one of the most important steps and that's gonna be editing the color profiles of your videos. So my goal here is always to make sure that all the video clips are up to par and that the colors all work with each other. You don't want one that's lighter, one that's darker, one that's off. You never know how the footage is gonna come out when you take everything from your camera onto a screen. One of the things I wanna point out with a couple clips here is one of the features that I told you about as far as GoPro settings. When you have your GoPro color setting set to color, like I mentioned in the previous video, there's a lot of contrast in the video. So all of your shadows are very prominent, all of the light is very bright. And this can make it hard to make a nice uniform video. It makes it harder to read the trail, just harder for the viewer to interpret the clip. In the video I told you to record with your GoPro color set to flat. This clip here, you can see is the same day, but the color is set to flat, so these shadows are a lot softer. Everything in the video is a little easier to read, and then I'll edit up the colors from there. 
Now, no matter the software you're using, the color editing should be pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna go to my first clip here, find a nice view where I can see a bit of the trail. I'm gonna go up here, and this is gonna show me all of my color corrections. So there's three different things that you need to worry about when you're editing. The first one, and what I usually play with first, is going to be your exposure. So for exposure, this is going to be the light and dark in your video. So you have your master wheel here, which will make it lighter or darker. You then have your highlights, which will make it brighter and darker, taking all the lightest portions of your video. You have your mid-tones, lighter and darker, and then you have all of the darkest portions of your video, lighter and darker. So you can play with all of these to see what works best for you. Generally speaking, I like to bring my highlights up to make sure that the trail pops, and then because I filmed in flat, I'm gonna bring my shadows down, and that allows me to add the level of contrast that I wanna to add to my video. You don't wanna to go too far, because it's gonna be way too dark. You don't wanna to go too light, because it's gonna look grainy and too soft, but somewhere right in the middle makes it look as realistic as possible and you can kind of play with these as you go. Once we have the exposure set, we'll play the video back. And as you can see, we're looking a lot better. We have some contrast, but it doesn't pop too much. And then we'll play with that and bring it to the level that we want. Now that we have that set up, we'll go back. The next one is going to be your saturation. So saturation, very similar. You have your master wheel, you have your highlights, midtones, and shadows. I like to keep it pretty simple. Um, I'll usually bring this up 15 to 30%. This video has a nice yellow glow to it because I filmed right in the morning. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of color. It actually has a nice color pop to it. So I'm gonna set that to 20. Bonus tip, don't put too much saturation. Make it look realistic. This mouse is supposed to be this red, not this red. Easy on the saturation, think realistic. Now, onto the final setting, and this one is where it gets a little trickier and a little more in depth. Sometimes when you film, the camera is gonna change its color settings, there might be a green hue, depending on what you're filming. Some of the colors in the video might pop and just might not work the way you want. So this is where your actual color wheel comes into play here. As you can see, you have your master color, your shadows, your midtone, and your highlights. The one that I usually like to play with is the highlights, and again, this is all gonna be trial and error. But you can see, maybe your video has too much of a green hue to it, so you can add some more blues to it. You know, originally it has kind of this yellow hue, which is actually kind of nice, I might leave it, but if I wanted to make it a little more realistic. I could bring this up and over. I think that's more of a true tone to what I was seeing on the trail as opposed to the warmer tone that you see here, which was the original tone. So again, this is going to be trial and error. Sometimes your colors are just off and you can kind of tweak these around to see what they do. Just another level of editing to make sure all of your clips are uniform. So now I've gone through and I've edited all of my clips, made the color of all of the footage as uniform as possible for now, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Now that we have that done, what we're gonna do is go through and start chopping up this footage and taking out some of the parts that are a little more bland or that just don't work for us. I'm just gonna play this video and I'm gonna show you how to use two very easy tools that should work in any video editing platform that you're using. For Final Cut Pro, uh, there is controls on the keyboard I can use, but there's a couple different tools here that you can use. One is the select tool, so that's how I select my clips. The most important tool after that is going to be the blade tool. So yes, this is a blade, literally like a scissor. If I go through my clip, I can cut this clip into whatever pieces I want, and that is how I trim my video down. So I'll go through, I'll play this video right now, starting kind of slow. So I'm actually gonna take this, I'm gonna cut that piece out. Now my video is gonna start where I'm just getting rolling to the trail. I don't wanna stay on this too, too long. So once I'm up in the woods, maybe I'll cut here and then I'll fast forward to where I'm rolling down the trail a bit more, maybe right there. So now I've taken a clip that's over a minute and a half long. I've drilled it down. Again, this goes to what I talked about in my previous video, and that is getting to the good stuff. So now you're gonna go through all this first person, cut out the pieces that don't make sense, and get to the most exciting parts of the video and what you really wanna feature. Once we have all that done, the next step for me is going to be to drop in some of this third person. Hey. You in there? All right, just wanna make sure you're still awake. I know it's a long video, but remember, you're learning. Learning is good. So as you see here, 
I have a bunch of different third person clips. What I'm gonna do is link in some of this footage into what I already have and just drop it into the places that I know it fits. So for example, I have this clip here of me going off of this log drop. I push in, so that's I, and then I push O for out, and that's gonna allow me to grab this one piece of this clip. Now I can take this, figure out where I wanna put it, make sure I'm on the right trail here, and there's my log drop. So I'm gonna drag my dropper there. I have this segment, and I'm just gonna plop it right there for now to get me started. So now as you see, if I play through this, once it hits that spot, it's actually gonna go right to that clip. And then you can see me come off this log. Obviously, I don't want it to just cut out over the top like that. So what I'm gonna do is take that blade tool, the cutting tool that I told you about. I'm actually gonna go in, figure out where I want this to be placed. And I'm actually gonna do it right after the landing to kind of show a revisit. I'm gonna cut right there, and I'm gonna drag this clip down. Again, to make this more efficient, I don't want all this waiting time before and after, so I'm gonna take my blade tool again, find that spot where my tire is just about to enter the screen, so right about there, and then find a spot right after the landing. I'm gonna take those ends off, so now I just have this quick clip, play this through. you see me come off the log, land, boom, goes the third person clip, and then back into the film. Just one example of how you can incorporate the third person. Now that I have that in there, obviously I'm going to need to go back into this third person clip that I just added, switch up the color to make it match the rest of the video. So now that I've switched up the color, I can go back, look at that, boom, landing, back to the clip. And just like that, we have a little third person clip in there that just mixes up the footage and makes it so it's not all that first person film behind the bars. Now that we have that one done, I'm just gonna go through and add a few more of these third person shots to make this video a little more exciting. All right, so now I've gone in and I've added a couple more third-person clips. That brings me to one of the next points and something we discussed in my previous film, and that is adding slow-person footage to your film. When I film this clip, I film this in 240 frames per second. And the rest of my film is 30 frames per second, so I know that I can slow this down pretty drastically to make it a better film. And even just scrolling over it, you can see how cool this actually is if I can slow that down. Right now, it all happens so fast that you don't really get to see it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take my blade tool again to cut this clip, and I'm gonna cut it right about where it's most intense and where I really want that slow motion to shine in this clip. Right through there, I wanna be able to see some of the dirt, and I'm gonna stop right about there. So now I have the initial clip is spit into three different pieces. I'm gonna take this middle piece, and again, depending on the software you're using, these might be in different places, but if I go up to this setting right below the screen, I can click slow. I can either slow it down, speed it up, normal. There's a bunch of other, you can reverse clips, you can reset speed, there's all these different options. I'm gonna to go to slow it down, and I'm gonna slow it down to 10% of the original speed. And you can see, it took this very small clip, and obviously it's a lot longer now because I slowed it down so much. But when we play it back, Start slow, boom, slow motion, dirt flies, crowd roars, boom, cuts out, back through the feature. So again, something as small as this, adding this one little slow motion piece, just makes a game changer. It's another level to your film, and if you add a few of those into your third person throughout the film, it's gonna make it that much more exciting for the viewer. Bonus tip. Slow motion is a perk, but don't put 30 seconds of slow motion. Quick clips, quick drops of slow motion. Nobody wants to see a 10 minute slow motion video. See ya. Now we have some pretty good first person footage. We've done our color editing. We've added in some third person clips to make it a little more exciting. What's next? I'm gonna pretend this one is done for our intents and purposes. So the next step for me is going to be to add my intro and then that'll roll into the video start itself. And then I'm going to put my outro at the end here. So this is my outro, so now I have a beginning and an end. Now, like I talked about in my previous video, now you really wanna see how you're going to start your actual video. So what I'm gonna do is take a couple of films that I took here of me getting out of the car, loading up the bike. I'm gonna add those in and cut those up. 
put them in the beginning to show you an example of a quick standard intro. All right, so now I've done some quick editing to make a little intro here. Again, this is nothing special, just wanted to show you how it can be done. So I've taken a few clips of me just checking out the bike at the car, dragged and dropped those, cut them up a little bit to trim them out, and this is what we've got. Standard intro, bike check on the side of the car, everything looks good, hop on the bike, and then that's gonna transition into the behind the handlebar view and that starts my third person and flows into the rest of the video. Now there's some other key elements that can make your video a little smoother from start to finish. One of those is going to be your transitions. So again, can be different in every software, but if you go over here in Final Cut Pro, there's a little transitions button and there's all these different transitions you can use. Now I like to keep it, and for this video, I'll keep it super simple. This is a standard cross dissolve. So if you scroll across this, you can see that it will dissolve from one clip to the other. So these are transitions from one clip to the other. And there's a million different ones. There's cool rectangles, there's colors, there's circles in and out. Again, for this, we'll take the standard cross dissolve. Now from here to here, you'll see that it just runs my logo, boom, all of a sudden it started. So if you wanna make that a little smoother, we'll take one of these transitions like cross dissolve, we'll drag it between these two clips and because this one ends pretty abruptly, it's gonna warn me that there's a little ripple, so it's gonna take a little off the end of this. But now, when we play this, logo drops, slowly transition into the opening of the film. So another cool feature there, and again, there are a ton of these, you can scroll through, you can play with them. Bonus tip, easy on the transitions. Keep it simple, this is not a circus act. Easy on the transitions, see ya. Now in addition to adding transitions to your video, you can add some music. So the intro is kind of bland. So you know what? I'm actually gonna turn the volume down. So now these will go from having some sound in them to no sound right off the bat. This is your sound control in your clip. It should be similar in every film. And what I'm gonna do is add some music. So again, different in every software, but in this, I can actually go in. I actually use Epidemic Sound, and I'll, I'll put some links in the description below of different uh, sound platforms you can use for music. You don't want to just take an artist's music and throw it up there without permission, because that is copyright infringement. So these are a few songs that I've downloaded. So what we're going to do is drag that down to our timeline. Normally, your music will go below your video. And I'm going to want that music to start right in the middle of that transition and then I want the music to end. So again, using our blade tool, I'm gonna have that music end right there. And then there's a little tab here where I can pull that back and it's gonna fade out as we move into the next clip. Now you'll see what was quiet before. We're gonna play that through with some music. So again, this is just an example. This is not exactly what I would do, but adding music to your video, especially in those spots where there's not enough sound from the bike itself, or there's nothing else going on, it can add another level to your video and just make it a little more exciting. Pro tip, bruh, you gotta turn your music down. Just, just turn it down a little bit. Just a little bit. Your music is usually too loud. Huh, later. Now that we've added some music to our video, there's many, many more features that you can add on. Music, text, different elements. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. So the last little trick and editing tip I'm going to show you here is how to crop and trim your clips. So as you'll see here, this is a nice clip. I feel like it works in my intro, but I wanna make it show it's a little squared and a little more close up. I have a couple tools here. One of them is gonna be transform where I can go up and make the clip smaller or larger. Second one down is going to be crop so I can crop and trim this. So I'm actually gonna click crop. I'm gonna take this little scroller here. I'm gonna zoom in more on myself there. That's about where I wanna be. I click enter and it zooms in that much more. So now when I go back here, you'll see the, the clip that I just zoomed in on, boom, zooms in nice and tight. I like that view, bounces back, rolling away on the bike. I just like how that plays more. And again, you can play with this with any clips. Do what works best for you. For our intents and purposes, I have made all of a one minute and 33 second video here. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm going to export this video. 
all of these settings are just titles. I want to make sure I have the best quality and I want my videos to be in 4K. So I'm going to take this video, I'm going to export it, and then I'm going to throw it in the end of this video here and show you guys what it looks like. Alright guys, so that wraps it up on my tips and tricks video for editing your mountain bike video. Again, if you haven't seen part one on gear or part two on filming, make sure you go check those out. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I hope it gave you some guidance if you're just getting into editing or some extra tips if you're already in editing and there's some things you just didn't know about. If you have any more comments or ideas, leave them below. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and follow along for more. And remember, making mountain bike videos is all about having fun. Get out there, film, throw it together, see what you can do. And just keep riding, guys.